welcome to another Teacher's Corner. I'm Teacher Kirby, and this episode we're going to go over the competitive war games, also known as the PvP reputation. Most of the things found in here will be useful for PvP. So uh, let's dig in. Alright, so first we have at Tier 1, when we look at the traits we get, these are ground traits, we have Undeniable, which gives an armor penetration buff. So attacking the enemy while they are immune to damage grants a short duration armor penetration buff, which means your enemy has to be immune at the time you attack, which frankly does not happen all that often but it does give you a large armor penetration when they, when you manage to pull off this near impossible task. All right, and additional things. So it gives 75 armor pen, which is large, and additional strikes lengthen the duration. All right, also you have munitions dampeners. You gain increased kinetic and physical damage resistance rating and it's just a passive uh, addition. So if you're looking for a little more resistance on the ground, this might be a good choice. All right, moon, run along, run along. Uh, tier two, we have the space versions of these traits. Again, you have to attack your enemy while they are immune to damage. And that is definitely difficult to do or to time. Then we have velocity attenuators and again it just increase kinetic and physical damage resistance rating. All right. In tier three we're back to ground traits. We have unstoppable and this is defeating an enemy player will drop a buff for your team. Any team member passing through the buff will grant a short duration speed increase and a shield and hit point heal for the team. Okay, so this is a team thing and uh, you have takedowns have a chance to drop a buff, 100% chance against players, 5% chance against non-players. So again, this is more PvP focused. If you're in a PvP match, you're guaranteed to drop a buff. If you're in a PvE or player versus environment or against NPCs, uh, you only have a 5% chance of dropping that buff. Okay, critical faint. And being critically hit will reduce the attacker's critical hit chance for a short duration. Uh, target loses 50% of critical chance for five seconds, but again, this is only when you are hit by a critical hit, which frankly, NPCs don't have a very high critical chance. And so again, this is more geared towards the PVP aspect because players are likely to have a pretty high critical hit chance even on the ground and you lose 50% of critical chance for five seconds, meaning this is really geared towards players because non-player characters only have 2.5%. All right, moving right along, right along, we have a similar thing for space. We have Rolling Tide, which is uh, the space version of the takedown. And again, uh, we get 100% chance against players, only 5% chance against non-players. Uh, the team buff in this case is extra turn rate and flight speed, some shield healing, and hull healing. Okay, and then we have our critical deflection, which is the same thing as the critical faint, uh, but this is in space. So again, being critically hit reduces your attacker's critical hit chance by 50%. This is again geared towards players playing against other players. 
rather than NPCs. Moving right along, right along, our tier five is Forced Challenge. Forced Challenge will tractor your target to you and deal shield damage to their forward shield facing. This is a challenge to your opponent that cannot be denied. So it will grab them and stick them right in front of you and do damage to the shield facing that's going to be facing you. So there you go. And it pulls them to within half a kilometer of you. And as again, deals some forward shield facing damage. This is a space trait. So there you go. And of course, our tier six improves everything by 25% by giving you the rank two version. Okay, fairly simple. All right, let's move along to our gear. So tier six, of course, when you unlock, you get the fleet ship module, captain retrain token, um, the vanity shield, and the hourly as always and of course the various discounts that go with it all right now we have for ground we have our duelist poly alloy weave armor so this gives quite a decent amount of root resistance and knockback resistance as well as physical and energy and specifically anti-proton damage resistance rating and versus non-melee attacks an additional 93.1 physical damage resistance rating so if you're getting physical damage applied but it's not from a melee source then you get a large amount of uh, physical damage resistance rating now, when you take damage, when your health is below 50%, this applies the special thing of this armor, which is called Duelist Fortitude. And this gives you a large amount of temporary hit points for 10 seconds, plus a large amount of run speed, allowing you to get away and heal yourself, as well as some extra hold, resist hold resistance and root resistance but this can only occur once every 30 seconds. It also has a moderate amount of health regeneration. And uh, the competitive war games reputation consumables, which we'll get on in a moment, are 15% more effective. We'll talk about this set completely first, and then we'll talk about consumables. All right, and then we have the personal shield. Um, the personal shield has 10% bleed through. And of course, as all personal shields on the ground do, it rapidly regenerates after not taking damage for three seconds. So this gives an extra of the things unique to this shield. It gives a 32 kinetic damage resistance rating versus non-melee attacks and an additional 93.1 kinetic damage resistance rating, which means it does give a large amount of kinetic damage resistance. Uh, when taking damage, while well, the shield is less than 10%, so it has to be pretty far down there, uh, it applies Duelist Invigoration, which gives you plus 100% incoming healing bonus for 10%, meaning it doubles for 10 seconds meaning it doubles your healing uh, and you heal for 28.1 on each incoming hit for 10 seconds so it makes your hits heal you and but this can occur only once every 30 seconds and this shield also reduces anti-proton damage to shields by 20 percent so there you go that is the shields and now we have of course the weapons and we have anti-proton and tetrion uh, tetrion is the secondary 
that you get when you reach tier 6. The primary was anti-proton. Okay, and this weapon uh, does some kinetic damage as well as anti-proton damage. So it does kinetic damage and has a 50% shield penetration and well as well as doing anti-proton damage and it has a 2% uh, critical chance and 20% critical severity and this of course is based on the modifiers crit D and crit H that you see in the title of the weapon and once you reach six out of six charges on the rapid anti-proton uh, rapid compression bolt setting you get a rapid anti-proton attack it has six charges and gives a bunch of kinetic damage and a bunch of anti-proton damage and reduces the run speed of your target as well as deals the critical chance and critical severity we discussed before okay uh, Tetrion would have the same thing except it would give Tetrion damage as you can see if I hover over the stats the anti-proton damage is simply changed to Tetrion damage everything else is identical alright so what does happen when we use the duelist regalia that is the ground set together so we have our set powers of course there is also a costume or cosmetic armor set that is unlocked when you collect all three pieces uh, these are available this is available in the tailor alright for both factions uh, Federation Klingon and Romulan alright now our set powers our two-piece set bonus is a complete passive and it's a plus 25 Tetrion damage plus 25 anti-proton damage and plus 25 kit readiness which shortens the uh, which shortens the cooldown on your kit modules okay and then we have set three piece set bonus which is decompression deluge this again is a passive ability and it says the final charge of duelist compression pistol secondary fire now applies to a player target 10 seconds of kit module and captain power recharge times to NPC char target it disables for 8 seconds and then target becomes immune to this effect for 45 seconds so if you're playing against a player it's going to take it's going to add another 10 second 10 seconds to the cooldowns of their kit module and captain powers okay which is pretty devastating um, makes it much harder to fight against somebody if you're an NPC target it simply disables you for 8 seconds but this can only happen once every 45 seconds against the same target All right, now I promised we were going to talk about the, um, what did it mention? That we were going to talk about the uh, competitive war games reputation consumables. If you've been doing the competitive reputation, you've seen these consumables. They look like this. They come out of the competitive war games box that you open every time you do a daily, and they clutter up your inventory. And there, if only if all you do is do PVE, player versus environment or NPCs, um, then they are completely useless. You can't use them and they're bound to character so of course you know you end up throwing them away if you do PvP however these can come in quite handy they are only useful in PvP player versus player 
so it's important to note that. These are only useful in player versus player matches. Okay, so important, take a look at them if you do play PvP. If you do player versus player, take a look at these, see what you can, uh, see you might want to see what you can do with them, and there you go. And of course the battle ones are, yeah. So, they can be interesting, they're interesting to look at if you play player versus player. Alright, moving right along, right along, right along. We have, of course, excuse me, we have, of course, our kit module. And here is our science kit module, since this is a science character. And we have integrated electrical field, okay? And this is, we create an integrated electrical field, of course. Uh, the charge refreshes once every 15 seconds and it creates a pylon for two minutes. Uh, subsequent nearby pylons draw currents from one another up to 15 meters away. So that is important to note. Uh, two foes within the currents, they get a minus 60% run speed for 1.8 seconds, and that's doubled against players so that would be 3.6 and um, sorry about that and we have hold on yeah and then we have uh, a number amount of electrical damage every second and that is of course doubled against players so it gives 280.7 and that is doubled against players, which I'm not going to do the math right away. So there you go. That is our science ability. And for our um, tactical, we have containment field. And that gives us, uh, you deploy containment field, it has a 30 meter range. That's actually quite a large range. To our target, it's minus 54.5% run speed for two and a half seconds. Creates a 30 meter diameter electrical containment field at the target for 10 seconds. Anybody who crosses this field gets held for 2.9 seconds. That's doubled against players. And it's a large dose of electrical damage every second and that's again doubled against players so pretty devastating again this is an area of effect area of effect is usually pretty uh, devastating alright and then for engineering we have flare mortar Ooh, and this creates a flare mortar for three minutes that launches flares into the air in the immediate area. Uh, to targets within 25 meters, you gain, or to foes, minus 500 stealth, so they ain't hiding. Uh, each launch exposes a random target within range. To allies in stealth, in self, it gives you plus 450 stealth, so it helps you to hide and plus 39% dodge chance. So it helps you to uh, dodge those shots. All right, so those are our kit modules. Moving right along, right along, right along. Now we have our space reputation. So first we have our flak shot artillery. This is one of the first times that we see a experimental weapon going into a reputation. Remember experimental weapons are used on ships that have seven weapons, usually four, three layouts, and uh, they are not part of the four, three 
things. Experimental weapons are have 360 degree targeting arcs and not all are created equal. Okay, so this one only affects up to three foes, but it does have a 360 degree targeting arc. Uh, it does some kinetic damage to primary target. These numbers are different because I'm on the ground, so I'm just I'm ignoring what exactly what the numbers say and focusing more on the type of damage. So it does a large amount of kinetic damage to the primary target and a moderate amount of kinetic damage to up to two random targets. Okay, all hits are 20% shield penetration and to you it does reduce your weapon power while this weapon is firing. The good news is it only has a four second recharge so it recharges quite fast. Alright, moving right along, right along, right along we have our secondary deflectors. Again this is one of the first times we're seeing secondary deflectors in a reputation. Okay, this comes out at tier 2 and it does come with a deflector, secondary deflector discount. So if you buy, purchase any one of these, it will automatically discount any future secondary deflectors that you um, purchase. Alright, so first we have our inhibiting uh, competition secondary deflectors. Excuse that alarm. Our inhibiting competitive secondary deflectors. Now this gives uh, an amount to EPG and drain expertise as well as control expertise. The amounts are all equal. Uh, it does have sensor analysis which gives an amount of outgoing damage uh, per stack up to five seconds if you're targeting a foe while you have secondary sensor analysis on them. Uh, inhibiting secondary deflectors have a delayed reaction of four seconds and they affect things like gravity well and subspace vortex as an example, uh, tractor beams as well. Um, so basically control effects are uh, affected or trigger you're inhibiting secondary deflector. But again, there is a delay of four seconds before it applies that radiation damage. But that damage does have a 50% shield penetration. All right, then we have our deteriorating competition secondary deflector. And this gives us, again, EPG, drain X, and uh, an extra drain X. So it gives uh, 26.2 drain expertise and 13.1 EPG or exotic particle generator. It has the same sensor analysis as the previous one and the deteriorating secondary deflector gives a radiation damage over time to the target of science buff debuff abilities. So these are things like your destabilizing resonance beam. Um, basically anything that gives a debuff that is science based will trigger your deteriorating secondary deflector. This one is popular or this flavor of deflector, secondary deflector, is popular among a lot of science builds that use the de destabilizing resonance beam because it throws out its damage over time effect immediately without that four second wait that the inhibiting secondary deflector has. Okay. And then we have our resonating competition secondary deflector. Now again, this gives a small amount to exotic particle generators, small amount to drain expertise, and then it gives 13.1 Starship Shield Restoration. Uh, this also has the sensor analysis, uh, so it gives uh, minus 7.5 outgoing damage per stack, and it 
and, uh, sorry. And it stacks up to six times against your foe. Okay, now this one, the resonating secondary deflector, applies to science bridge officer abilities that heal or buff. And this gives a uh, increase effectiveness of hull heals on target for 2% or by 2% for 15 seconds as well as 2.5% shield resistance for 15 seconds. So this one doesn't actually do any damage but it gives you some extra buffs. Okay, so that is important to know the difference between your three secondary deflectors. And these are the same unique qualities of each secondary deflector that you would get from crafted or fleet secondary deflectors as well. Inhibiting applies to control effects. Okay, deteriorating applies to debuff abilities like destabilizing resonance beam is a good example and resonating applies to bridge officers that heal or buff like for example your um, hazard emitters or your science team one science team it would apply to all levels of science team okay moving right along right along universal com covert munition deployment console. This is part of our first set, the munition set, and that has, all right, so it gives a an amount to quantum projectile damage, only quantum, not, not photon, not any of the others, just quantum, uh, and an amount of starship stealth plus 20 starship control expertise. So again, the starship stealth, this is geared towards PVP control, this is geared towards science or PVP. Okay. And then we have our anti-proton heavy support. And again, this is going to be the same whether you're doing anti-proton or tetrion, whether you're doing the turret. Uh, whether you're doing the turret, the omni beam, or the uh, or the omni beam of whichever flavor you choose. Again, anti-proton is the primary uh, flavor or power choice available, and then tetrion is added once you reach tier six. So let's take a look at the omni, since really it doesn't matter whether you're doing the turret or the omni uh, it's going to fill in that uh, energy weapon space okay so we have uh, it gives a of course the omni gives a both omnis and turrets give a 360 degree targeting arc uh, it gives anti-proton or tetron damage depending on which flavor you choose and our, the unique thing is it gives a minus five critical chance to your target for five seconds and minus 25 percent critical severity to your target for five seconds so again we're looking at things that debuff players okay non-player characters have only 2.5 percent critical chance so when you look at this and it's taking away five percent crit severity or crit chance for five seconds that's most definitely towards players meant to be towards players um, of course because you have the ACC um, modifier on this weapon it has plus 10 accuracy rating alright and then we have our projectile which is a mine launcher so for the competitive mine launcher it has its quantum mines and it distributes them in a wide pattern has a chase range of 3.5 kilometers that's typical for mines uh, mine damage scales up over time after deployment so the longer they can stay in place the more damage they will do they reach, reach max damage after 30 seconds 
they gain plus 5% damage per second. And because this has a crit D and two crit H mods, it gains plus 20% critical severity and plus 4% critical chance. And these mines have a 20 second recharge. Okay. Now when you combine all of these items, Okay, you have, for the two-piece set bonus, you have Hidden Payload. Hidden Payload gives a stealth bonus based on current throttle percentage. So when you're running, um, you get up to 4,550 stealth, which is quite a bit. Um, or sorry, you get up to, my bad. I misread that. You get up to 4,850 stealth. You get as low as 4,550 stealth. Uh, when you're running full throttle, you get less stealth, stealth buff. When you're not running at all, it takes three seconds to put you up to the maximum bonus, which is 4,850, and considered cloaked. So basically, when you are not running and have waited three seconds, you are considered to be cloaked with almost 5,000 stealth. Um, you get a plus 15 to Starship Control Expertise, and this is all passive. So if you like to, but it is important to note that when you are in combat, in other words, when you are in red alert, this stealth bonus is disabled. Okay, so important to note. Uh, but again, it's hiding, things like that, so this is definitely a PvP intended, or player versus player intended bonus. Uh, set 3, Master of the Mind, spelled M-I-N-E-D, so Master of the Things to Do with Minds. You get a plus 33% quantum projectile weapon damage and plus 30, 33 all damage resistance rating to mines and torpedoes, specifically. Plus you get a seeking mine subroutine, which is a clickable. This has a 10 kilometer range and two minute recharge. It instructs all active mines to track towards your target for 30 seconds. Mines still active near targets while tracking. Or still activate near targets while tracking. So if they get to another target within three and a half kilometers while they are on their way to your primary target, then they will seek that target instead. All right. So that is our munitions set. And now we have, and this is back to the days of the Borg um, reputation, we have three different space sets. We're looking at specifically deflector, engine and shield as well as warp or singularity core. Now they are largely similar. The biggest difference is here in the deflector where you'll notice there's one, two, three, four, five different things that it gives a buff to. They are largely similar with the largest buff going to whatever area these this specific set is boosting the most. So here with the prevailing innervated deflector, we see that the largest bonus is going to Starship Weapon Specialization, which improves your critical hit chance with weapons. Okay, so that is this set is mostly focused on tactical abilities and improving your tactical abilities. So when we look at this, it does have some hull capacity, shield capacity, and stealth. 
as well as increasing your perception. Okay. It is also important to note that you can mix and match from various uh, sets within this reputation. So if you wanted the innervated deflector with one of the other sets, uh, shields, etc., etc., you can mix and match. Each of these, when you buy them, gives the discount to the rest of the to the deflectors or the engines or the warp core, for example. Okay, for the innervated impulse engines, we have uh, basically standard flight speed and turn speed bonus. Your thrusters get 25% speed when engines are disabled. That is a unique thing. And then we have the prevailing engines overcharge. This is what makes the uh, competitive engines meta or must have for the current DPS crowd. Okay, so for our prevailing engine overcharge, for the innervated engines, the trigger is firing when activating a firing mode bridge officer ability. That means your fire at will, your beam overload, your cannon scatter volley, your cannon rapid fire, your torpedo spread, your torpedo high yield. Any of these abilities trigger this condition. Alright, so when you activate firing mode bridge officer abilities, you get a huge boost of flight speed for five seconds, a huge boost of flight turn rate for five seconds, uh, plus you get a decent defense rating making you harder to hit, and increased recharge speed on tactical bridge officer abilities for 10 seconds. Okay, so the biggest thing that make the competitive engines must have is the huge boost to flight speed and turn rate. This allows you to get to where you want to go, okay, as quickly as possible. So, and that is one of the biggest things in doing the amount of DPS is getting there when you need to be there. Getting to wherever you need to be as quickly as possible so that you have less downtime between where you were and where you need to be. Because, you know, if you're taking 20 seconds to travel from where the enemies were to where the new set of enemies were, that's a lot of downtime where you're not fighting anything. So you got to get to where you need to be as quickly as possible. And obviously, a 350% flight speed helps greatly. So basically you go, ah, ludicrous speed. Okay, but again, the innervated engines trigger when you do firing modes. So your fire at will, your beam overload, your uh, cannon firing skills, and your torp firing skills. Okay, we'll talk about the other ones, what they trigger, what triggers them on uh, as we get to them. Okay, so your innervated warp core gives resistance to control effects in addition to its normal things. Uh, it gives an additional engine power, gives plus five maximum engine power. Okay, so that you can, your more, the more power is going to your engines. Okay, and you have, you can do warp 10 or warp 9.97 and then it gives uh, resistance to control effects which scales based on your engine power for the innervated warp core and then your the uh, reputation consumables are 15% more effective and this is yeah okay so we already went over the consumables for while we were talking about the ground. Okay, 
And then we have our prevailing innervated singularity, very similar, bonus to engine power based on singularity charge level, and resistance rating to control effects, and of course reputation consumables are 15% more effective. All right, and then we have our shields. Now these shields are what we call resilient shields, and if you look, they have 5% absorption, 5% bleed through, which means that less of the energy damage is getting to you, half of it, only 5% rather than the 10% that the other shields offer. So this is my favorite type of shield. It has a good amount of maximum shield capacity, a large amount of regeneration, and its special ability any attacker that damages you is placated for one second. Max once every 20 seconds. There's also unique ability 5% chance when damaged by energy damage that you get 1% critical chance for 5 seconds and 10% critical severity for 5 seconds. If this procs again, it extends the duration, it does not stack that's important to note. Uh, it also has some physical and kinetic call resistance rating on this shield so very interesting and again this is going towards the uh, DPS side improving critical chance improving you know triggering when firing modes are hit uh, giving you critical chance on your weapons with the deflector this is all the damage dealing uh, side for the innervated. Then we have the bolstered. So again, same thing. You know, hull capacity, shield capacity, stealth, and uh, drain expertise, uh, as well as perception. And then the large amount of uh, stat is going towards your drain expertise. Okay. And if we look at the engines we have that same prevailing engine overcharge right everything else is the same except the prevailing engine overcharge and that is triggered by using a control or drain bridge officer ability so this is your gravity well this is your Tykin's rift this is your you know your uh, tractor beam this is your um, repulsor beam this is your anything that drains uh, I can't remember off the top of my head but anything that drains anything that is controllability is a scramble sensors for example is a controllability any of these things will trigger your uh, 350 flight speed and 350 percent flight turn rate okay and then we have our bolstered warp core which gives us our bonuses to auxiliary power rather than engine power and gives an exotic damage resistance rather than control damage resistance. Everything else is the same. And then for our singularity core, same thing. Auxiliary power instead of engine power and again exotic damage resistance that scales with aux power. Okay, and for our shields, uh, same thing, same exact stats as previously. Okay, except with this one, instead of getting a uh, critical chance, we get plus 3,000 temporary hit points for five seconds. And again, this does not stack. The duration of the hit points is simply lengthened. Okay. All right, and then we have our fortified prevailing set, and this is um, our large stats go to energized hull plating, and this improves energy damage resistance rating. So we have our starship hull capacity, shield capacity, stealth, and perception, with the large amount going to energy damage resistance okay 
and then our engines same stats except the engine overcharge is activated by heal or shield heal bridge officer abilities so that's your engineering team science team um, your hazard emitters your uh, ox to sif your anything that grants you a heal or a shield heal will trigger this okay so if you have a lot of heals and that's your primary thing then this might be something to consider although generally we recommend going with the innervated engines for competitive engines all right and then we have our bonuses going to shield power for the from the warp core and our resistance this time is to drain resistance rather than uh, control or exotic uh, abilities all right and then we have same thing with our singularity core everything's going to shield power with our resistance being to drain and then we have with our shields we have of course physical and kinetic hull resistance uh, we have our 5% absorption, 5% bleed through, and our bonus, 5% uh, chance when damaged by energy damage to get a plus 20% maximum hit points for 10 seconds. And again, uh, act, uh, increasing procs or extra procs only increase the duration. They do not stack. All right moon right along right along right along we have and of course all of these can be mixed and matched so you can have pieces of all three so you might want say the uh, innervated engines with the oh I don't know with the bolster deflector and the I don't know the fortified shield as an example and I'm just you know I'm shooting from the hip here that is possible and will complete the set or will will count towards completion of the sets the important thing is that they're prevailing not what the second word is okay and generally for DPS the DPS crowd recommends the innervated impulse engines as the competitive engine of choice all right moon right along right along our set powers we have well rounded and that gives us plus 15 starship hull capacity plus 15 starship control expertise and plus 15 weapon specialization these are just passive flat bonuses all right our three-piece set bonus coagulative particle resilience try saying that three times fast uh, when damaged by energy damage you gain plus 1.5 bonus energy damage resistance rating for 1.5 seconds this stacks to a max of 10 stacks so you can have plus 15 bonus energy damage resistance rating but it is for a very very short duration uh, when at 10 stacks you gain plus 100 bonus energy damage resistance rating for five seconds which I would imagine is very hard to stack but it is when never damaged by energy damage so okay but you get the 100 bonus energy damage resistance rating for five seconds can occur once every 30 seconds or sorry once every 25 okay sorry yeah once every 30 seconds my bad all right our four piece set bonus I'm just misreading stuff all over the place four piece set bonus overwhelming tactics and that is it targets foe 
your enemy, has a 10 kilometer range, uh, has a very short uh, recharge at one minute, and gives negative 50% all damage for 10 seconds. So in other words, it cuts in half the damage that your foes are doing to you. That's pretty important. And again, I'm going to reiterate, all of these are based towards giving you advantage in player versus player. Okay, player versus player environments or situations. So this is considered, oh, the PvP rep. You'll hear people refer to it as that. So there you go. The PvP rep or the competitive rep explained. Okay, and again, remember, if you do a lot of PvP, check out the store. These may be useful to you. Okay, so there you go. The competitive reputation. This is Teacher Kirby. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you next time.